Yeah. Hey guys, Hazard Shield K9. I'm here with uh, Robbie, and Robbie is a German Shepherd Malinois mix, um, and he's one of the dogs that we have here that uh, we're preparing for uh, police service or security work. Um, and uh, I think I'm going to take the opportunity with Robbie to show you some old school training. Because, you know, a lot of the stuff that you see on YouTube these days, it's all very, like, new school. We've got the clickers going. We've got, you know, e-collars and all this type of stuff. But there are some dogs and there are, there are some times in your training where you, you really don't need that stuff. Or maybe that stuff isn't ideal. So, for instance, with Robbie, he's, this is a milk bone. Okay, he just, look at that, he, and that's pretty much him with any piece of food, you know, like he doesn't care that much, like he'll mouth it, he'll lick it, if it's particularly tasty, you know, he'll kind of eat it, but there's just not a lot of food drive there, whether you starve him or not, you know, he's just not willing to work all that hard for it, he actually wants to play with me more than he wants to eat this piece of food. So obviously using food and obedience training is going to be a long and fruitless journey um, full of frustration. And I'd rather avoid all that and get right to the point with him. So I've got a pinch collar on Robbie. I've got a leash. I don't even have toys. He loves toys. I'm not even going to use toys for this. I'm just going to do it the old school way. And I'm going to show you how you can teach literally any dog, whether they have drive, no drive, uh, you know, whether they have a high desire to please you or no desire to please you how to do it down, okay? Um, and for me, it's one of those things where it's not, I, I shouldn't have to take two weeks to train a dog to lie down. Lying down is really easy. Sitting is really easy. And I don't mean will he do it for food or will he do it if he feels like it. I mean will he do it every single time. So we're gonna use a process called negative reinforcement and then I'm gonna use positive reinforcement. And I know you're wondering, how am I gonna use positive reinforcement with this dog if he doesn't like food? Well, guess what? You can praise and play with your dog as positive reinforcement. It doesn't have to be just food. That's a common misconception a lot of people have. Okay, guys. So, I'm going to show you now how I train this. Now, word of caution. If you haven't introduced your dog to the prong collar at all, don't do this. First, introduce your dog to the prong collar. Um, and if you don't have a relationship with the dog, like Robbie knows me. We've done a bunch of stuff together already. Um, don't do this because the dog needs to have a relationship and some trust in you before you do this with the dog, all right? So, now what I'm gonna do with Robbie is he doesn't really understand pressure that goes down. A lot of dogs, they naturally understand up pressure, right? He knows what happens. He sits, I stop pulling immediately. It's pretty simple for him. A lot of dogs have not felt pressure that goes down. And when they feel it, they have a little bit of a panic. And people often make mistakes at this point. Right? So what I want to do with Robbie to teach him the down is I'm going to make that pressure directly down. I'm going to go down with him, and I'm going to make it gently down, all right? So you can see here, just very gently. I'm barely pulling on the, on the lead, just enough that he feels it. He's trying to kind of lean into me. I'm just going to hold him out there a little bit, and I'm going to make that pressure. Now, sure, I could exert like three times as much as I'm exerting now, but that's not the point. So wait for it. There's a moment. Good. And when he puts his head good, and when he puts his head down, I immediately stop. I'm not shooting for the whole enchilada right now. I'm just waiting for the minute he kind of just gives a little bit. I'm going to feel it. So there you can see the pressure's on, and I'm going to wait. That's it. Good boy. Now we're going to break. And I'm going to pet him. That's it. And I'm going to give him some positive reinforcement. Yeah, Mama. Yeah. 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 Right? And I'm going to raise him up and make him happy, and then we're going to do it again. All right? So I'm going to make that pressure again. And I'm not going to, there's no command yet. Oh, almost. You almost did it. There's no command yet because it's not necessary. Oh, oh good job, buddy. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Good boy. Yeah. All right? There's no need yet to shoot for the whole thing. I'm just shooting for that. There's a brief instant that he gives to the leash. You know, a lot of people think of training with pressure as it's just like a, kind of like a master slave kind of thing. I told you to do it, so you're gonna do it. And yeah, you can make it like that, or you can make it more of a positive experience for the dog where he deals with the pressure a little bit, he gives to it a little bit, immediately break and praise. 
You don't have to shoot for the whole down right away. So again, make a little bit of pressure, and I'm gonna wait, almost. He's giving now, but I'm gonna ask a little more. No, nope, that's not the right behavior. We're gonna wait. And again, not heavy pressure, it's very light. And I'm gonna wait, and if he has, if he jumps around a little bit, I'm just gonna wait here with him. And there's gonna be a moment. There it is, that's it, good boy. Good boy. And the real important thing is the second I felt him give, I came back up with the leash and he really, the, 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 all that sensation that he was feeling around his neck immediately disappeared, okay? So again, I'm gonna make that pressure. All right, now he's giving a lot, but he's kind of anticipating the play a little bit. So I'm gonna keep him here for, for a little bit longer. We're gonna, almost, almost. Now I'm gonna shoot for the elbows all the way on the ground. And again, just enough pressure to keep him from going. That's it, good job, buddy. Good boy, okay? Now we're gonna go again. We're gonna make that pressure. We're gonna make that pressure. Not yet. Not yet. Can't play yet. Make that pressure. You can see there's. Not yet. Not yet. And he's a happy guy. He wants to play. So I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. Elbows. That's it. Yeah, buddy. Come here. Where you going? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right? So I'm showing him, there's a good boys. I'm showing him how to defeat that pressure. There's no command needed yet. Again, we're gonna make that pressure. And now I can be a little more insistent because now he's starting to understand. Pressure stays on, pressure stays on. And it's really important, a lot of people overdo it, especially with a sensitive dog, like he's a Malvix. And he carries a lot of the sensitivity that a lot of the Malinois have. So if you overdo it, you're going to get the dog to turn on the leash. She's going to turn on you. Maybe you'll scream, roll around on the ground. We don't want any of that if it's possible to avoid it. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the pressure. Now, he put his butt down. And that's what a lot of dogs who know really well how to sit do, but they don't know how to lie down. They think, okay, I'll just put my butt down because that's what I always do. But there's, this is where the learning comes in, and he has to kind of figure it out. It's like... I'm asking a question with the leash, and he still hasn't come up with the solution to that question yet, or the answer. So we're just gonna keep that pressure, and almost, he still, and his whole problem is he put his butt down first, and he doesn't know how to go from his butt to his elbows. He knows how to go from his elbows to his butt, but not his butt to his elbows. So we're just gonna wait him out here. Good boy, yeah, good job, buddy. That's it, yeah. Yeah, and when you're training with pressure, it's so important that when you start the pressure, you don't give that pressure back to the dog until he's doing the right thing. And that's what a lot of people screw up, right? Is the dog will do something wrong and they'll give the pressure back to the dog. So let's say he bit the leash or let's say he, he jumped on me or something. I get, well, now what I'm gonna do is every time I make that pressure, he's just gonna jump on me or bite the leash or something like this. But the way that you avoid all that bad stuff is by going really incrementally and working within the threshold of what the dog understands, all right? So, let's go back and we'll do it again. That pressure. Good, break, yeah! And I'm using the break already and I'm teaching him, hey, the second I say break, you can get up. That's so good, yes, buddy, yeah! Good job, and now we're gonna do it again. And I'm going to add the word now. Flats. And I'm going to pull. And we're going to wait. That's it. Not, not yet. Flats. And you see, I, pra I started to praise him. And he got confused. He got up. That's okay. That's part of it. Good. Break. That's it. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Good job. And we're going to do it again. Flats. It's still there, but it's loose. Break. Yeah. So I'm starting now to get to the point where the dog is lying down all the way. 
I can release the pressure, he stays there. I can start to praise him, he stays there, right? And I'm starting to teach him exactly what I want. Let's pressure. running over there because that's where we go to do bike work. <laughs> that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. Yeah, yeah, yes. You want to do bike work. Okay. So, now, again, we're going to increase the criteria. Let's pressure down. Good. No, that's, and here he made a mistake, but it's a, an understandable mistake. There's no reason to be angry. Good. Good. Ah, butts. And I'm letting him know. Wrong. And I'm just going to go back to it. Good. Ah, that's it. And the issue was me moving my feet. He paired the motion of my feet with the break. So it's really important to show him. I can move my feet doesn't mean you get up. Wait until you hear the word. But this is the process where you show the dog what it all means. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay, and we do it again. Do it again. Flex. Again, the pressure. Good. Good. Break. That's it. Good job. Now, I'm going to walk him around a little bit. And we're going to start doing it in different spots in the room. Just because he can do it in that spot of the room doesn't mean he can do it everywhere. And this is where we got to start kind of generalizing our training, because dogs don't generalize very well. Let's. Good job. Right. That's it. Right? So you can see, you know, people tend to have a really bad perception of old school training. And you know, you can see Robbie's not falling apart. He's handling it well. Yeah, there's stress involved, but there's stress involved in all complete learning processes, whether it's a human learning process, an equine learning process, a canine learning process, or any animal you care to name. If you're gonna make reliable learning, there is some stress involved to some degree at some point, okay? Let's. Good. Let's. Knows them, right? They know that horses need bits. 
and I know, sure, there's some of them that are like bitless, but I'm pretty sure that, you know, that's a whole other level of complexity in and of itself. And dog training is the same. So, I hope this helped you guys, and um, I just wanted you to see some old school training um, in a way that you can use at home, maybe with your dog, or you can help, it helps you with a specific thing, whether it's a sit, a down, a stay. Um, this, this method can work in many different contexts.